All right, so here we are. We're back again. Um, this is actually the first summoning video I've done in a while. Um, it's the first summoning video video I've done in a while, but I have been summoning this whole time, obviously. Um, yeah, I think I pulled like Hua Yun came out. I pulled her and an imprint of her. I did like I got like three copies of Jacko. I'm not sure. I don't remember what else I summoned. But anyway, the point is uh, here we are. Um, I was supposed to do a Guild War video yesterday, but, um, uh, I didn't do it. And I guess it's double punishment, not just because, like, video-wise, but, like, um, I don't get any Mystic Medals because if I don't make the Guild War video, I didn't do Guild War at all, so, <laughs> um, yeah. Like, I'll do it in the morning because I've been more used to doing it in the mornings and then, uh, now it's like, I have to, you know, anyway, I have to make a video on it, so I have to wait till I get back from work and, uh, sometimes I just forget or I get tired or lazy. But anyway, here we are. Um, we're going to summon an Arya. Like I said, I don't think she's going to be... I mean, I made a joke about it, but I don't think she's going to be, like, meta-defining in any way. Um, I could be wrong, of course. Um, we never know about these things, but um, like I said, uh, this S1 is just... It's a nice cleave. Um, decrease hit chance, and, you know, she's got defense scaling as well as, like, just being a very tanky mage. Uh, free crit chance is never a bad thing. Uh, crit damage, of course, is for free. Uh, having an extra attack on here is pretty good too, and then lastly, uh, this just gives her defense, counterattacking stance, and all that stuff. Um, like I said, I'm not sure. I feel like I'm just gonna run her. Like I think life steal would be good on her, just because life steal scales really well with defense. Of course, there's a lot of true damage coming out, so it doesn't really matter. Um, like she's just instantly gonna die to Ramiru. Like I, like I don't know what to tell you. Like you're not gonna, yeah. Like she needs too much defense to do her thing. So you have to kind of drop some HP, and if you're dropping HP, she's just going to die to Ramiro. Like, it doesn't really, like, it doesn't matter. She's, she's just dead. Uh, it's kind of one of the main problems you end up finding when you're using Dilibet. Uh, an RTA, like, obviously in, in Guild War or Arena, like, she, uh, Ramiro, you can just bait him out with, like, a Crow or something or some water type. Uh, but in Arena, an RTA, um, like, they just get stomped on. Like, they just get slaughtered. It's not even funny. Um, but yeah, so anyway, let's, uh, let's get in here. Let's do the daily summon real quick. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, actually, her artifact isn't too bad. Um, 16% damage increase and a 50% chance to in inflict the debuff. I kind of like this for uh, Zerato, but the problem with Zerato is you kind of have to run them on something that strips. And then um, on top of that, the like the, the damage on because I have what I have on Zerato is that fairy tale artifact because it strips has a six percent chance to strip, um, as well as being able to um, do like just some free true damage so it does like a thousand or fifteen hundred so I don't remember, um, and this is actually a little bit better because that true damage that you get from the that that artifact doesn't scale like doesn't help your your life steal because you run them on life steal well, not everyone runs them on life steal. I run them on life steal. Um, Sure, most people do, but I'm sure other there's other builds. I just life steal is probably the better way to go. But anyway, the point being that like this scales his life steal, so you do 16% more damage, which means you get a little bit more life steal off of that um, that attack, which is pretty good. Um, but like I said, I think he really does need the um, the uh, true damage or not the true damage, the the, the uh, strip, because uh, then he gets a bunch of debuffs on him and they can't take him off, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so all right, let's get in here. Let's enough delaying this. Uh, I don't think, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to pull for more than one copy of her. Uh, like I said, I think she's just for fun. Like, I pulled Jacko, because for one, Jacko's cool, and I'm probably just going to triple less her, because I, you know, I like her. I don't know how good she's going to be. I haven't seen anybody use her, and I'm still building her. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with her. Um, what I'm going to do is probably put her, like, on a rage set, and then just have her be there, like, because... Yeah, like, uh, what people don't really understand is, like, one of her, her biggest strengths is that S2 that gives someone else that, um, stun chance buff, whatever, that, um, uh, that, that, uh, personal buff, whatever. Um, cause that, like, like, imagine running a team that has her and, um, Belion, right? Belion can strip, and she constantly S2s, or S1s. And she can stun now. Like, you give her a 25% chance to stun. So now you can just, like, take all speed off of her, have that buff last for two turns, and you're basically done. Like, the lion is now just annoying as hell. Um, 
for those of you who don't have Belion, like Belion, now Belion can strip, she can stun, she can taunt, she can um, inflict injuries, she can, uh, what was the other one? She can blind and decrease speed, like all in one kit. Like, that's ridiculous. Um, but yeah. Again, it's not always going to work out that way. Like in RTA, she's not as good because you have to kind of like play around her, play with her. But in in Arena, like if you just set up your defense team to have those units, then I think, you know, that's going to be really annoying. Because Belion on Arena, in Arena, is already pretty irritating. Um, some people like to think she's more broken than she is, which I, I can't agree with. But I think she's really good, right? Regardless. But yeah, like, like I said, if you don't have Belion, um, you can use Rem as like a discount version of her. Because Rem strips and then applies the debuff. I'm not sure how that works with the um, with the buff that Jacko gives. But anyway, like I said... Jacko I found more fun, more interesting. Uh, Hua Yung, I knew she was going to be really good for the moment like she came out. I didn't really see any videos on her. But, I mean, on top of the fact that I just like her artwork. I mean, I just saw her and I was like, yep, yeah, I'm taking that lady. Um, uh, even outside of the kit. Now, would I have pulled for multiple copies outside of the kit? Uh, I don't know, but I just like her design. Oh, there's more Zerados. I'm actually, for any of you wondering, like, I actually six-starred and, and Max Awakened finally my, um, my Armin recently, and she's also Max imprinted. Um, not that she shouldn't be at this point, but <laughs> I'm actually excited to use her. I'm actually excited to see what, like, what she can do. Because I think the, the most, like, one of the things, like, I've been thinking about over the past week, or, like, since that, um, since that video came out, or since the, the patch notes came out, was... The idea of finally having like a single target reducer, right? Because before we had something like, uh, what's his name? We had, um, you know that guy, um, Trousers, uh, ML Crozet. Uh, he reduced like one person's damage that they took by like 40% because he did tra damage transfer. However, the point being that now we have someone that just straight up is damage mitigation for single target. And single target right now is increasing in value by quite a lot because nobody wants to AOE because there's Belions everywhere. Um, obviously, REMs, like things like counter counter units are all over the place. Um, ML Rabbi is a, a problem. So as, as AOE decreases, that unit's power increases by a whole lot more as well. Um, so I think that's pretty interesting. Um, I think, again... The whole kit and everything they did to change her is, like, good and it's, like, interesting. So we'll see how that goes. But to me, like, one of the most, more understated things that I was thinking about, like, that really grew on me in terms of, like, how useful I think she's going to be in the coming meta. That single target damage reduction sounds pretty ridiculous. Um, especially with things like Belion and whatnot running around. Or not Belion. Things like um, Hua Yung running around. Again, I don't think you're going to survive a Hua Yung because... Oh, there you go. I don't think you're going to survive a Hua Yung anyway, because, like, Violet with 16k HP, uh, what's that called? Um, Aureus, and the, so, Violet, 16k HP, with an Aureus effect in play, and, um, Hua Yung missing her S3, she still does enough damage to one-shot him. Which is crazy because, I mean, on the one side, uh, Hua Yung is hitting into elemental advantage, so that's like, she gets 50% more damage. However, missing a hit on a unit reduces your damage by 75%, right? And she still just one-shots him, which is pretty insane. Um, yeah, so I don't really know, you know, like there's no unit you can use to bait her out. She's just going to kill somebody because... If you bring a high HP unit to survive, because like defense doesn't matter, right? She penetrates defense. So if you bring a high HP unit, her HP scaling thing kicks in and you just get one shot. And then if you bring in a low HP unit, then they're just going to get one shot anyway because her attack scaling is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was the main video. Um, I think I, I wanted to summon for uh, Mediocre Calric here. Um, but th these rotations are garbage. This artifact is garbage and it's been garbage since forever. And I don't know why they're not going to make it. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do this to not make it garbage, but this is garbage. I don't know what you want to tell you. Um, and then this rotations are really bad because, like, we get Pavel, which, like, who cares? 
And the next rotation, we get Flan, which also who cares. And then secondly, we get this thing, which also sucks. Like, damn. I have to wait. Like, it's always annoying because, like, you always know which ones. Like, they know everyone wants him, so they're just going to, like, put garbage in here. And you always have to wait till the last one. The last one's, like, inevitably, like, garbage as well. So it's like, I don't, it's like, you're just, just stuck in a, in a in a very bad place. It doesn't really matter. I probably won't summon for him now anyway because I don't have enough to pity. So it's not that big a deal. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he's pretty good. Pretty good these days. He's really annoying. Um, but it's just good to have more debuff cleansers. Oh okay, yeah, so that'll be it for today. Um, like I said, the other video might be coming out today or maybe tomorrow. I mean, probably tomorrow I'm going to be doing Guild Wars, so maybe today is a video talking about, like, balancing and, and power creep and stuff like that and, like, kind of giving some thoughts on it from, from somebody who's been doing this kind of stuff for a long time. Like, I've been, I've been making videos for a long time, but I have been playing these kinds of games for a very, very long time. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, good luck with your guys' pulls. I think I got halfway to pity, which is pretty good. That means I have another pity for whoever comes next. Um, not pulling for Ludwig. I think I have like a, I have a max imprint Ludwig, like in terms of like copies sitting around. I'm just waiting for him to hit the um, Mystic Shop or the Mystic Rotation, like get ML Ludwig, and then just like ML Ludwig better, but just look like Levi. That'd be hilarious. Like just give him edgier hair and make him turn him into Levi, and give, like give him two swords or something. Like it'd be amazing. Call him the Giant Slayer or something. That'd be crazy. Giant Slayer Ludwig. Um, but yeah, that, that'd be what I'd pull for. Um, I think as much as they try to buff and patch and do stuff to Ludwig, he's just, like, really lame. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. Uh, so this is AoE, but you want to do this first to get the invincibility, and then the invincibility helps you do this, right? And then this is just here to be here. Oh, you steal a buff. I didn't realize that. And 50% chance. This is kind of interesting. I think maybe like, uh, you know what? I think high damaging mages with decent S1s, especially S1s at combat readiness. Like this one has pretty good stuff. Like combat readiness with this thing up here. I think a lot of times you could probably just relegate them to counter set and it wouldn't be too bad because they need a lot of HP and they need a lot of damage. And um, a lot of people kind of like, you need speed on him, which is pretty good. But um, I think, you know, you can probably get away with something like that. Again, with him, speed is okay because you don't need HP because he has invincibility. So as long as he goes first, he'll get this and, you know, whatever. But it's just better things to be wasting your 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 gear on is the point. Um, but yeah, that being said, like I said, uh, hopefully you guys have good luck on her and um, you get her. But again, she's not necessary, so just kind of pull her if you're like, if you want to try something fun out. I didn't get the artifact, sadly, because I, I also didn't get the Jacko artifact, which is gone now, which I didn't really care for very much because I think... I like Merciless Glutton a little bit better, but that's, you know, that's besides the point. Well, yeah, that'll be all for today.